Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing really well out there today. In today's video, we're going to take a look at an image and document processing software called Ruba. Now, we're going to be doing this in Docker, and I only say that because I've been getting more and more comments uh, that people come to my videos not realizing that we're talking about Docker applications that is kind of what we do on this channel. So I just wanna preface this with Ruba is a Docker application. If Docker's not your thing, that's cool. Um, but that's what we're doing here. We're gonna take a look at a couple of different ways to install it via Docker. Um, but again, if Docker's not your thing, uh, maybe you can find some other content out there that suits your needs for this purpose. Now, the other thing that I wanna say real quick is I actually found this video yesterday um, because my buddy Ben over at Snack Time uh, covered this on his channel. Uh, he did a great job. So if I miss something or you want more information about Ruba, definitely go check out his video. It will be linked in the video description. Um, he actually covers a couple of cool things that I hadn't considered when uh, uh, using this with uh, Nginx Proxy Manager for security purposes and networking Nginx Proxy Manager with multiple applications. He actually does something kind of cool in there and I'd be curious to see if you notice it. The whole point of this is to, um, you know, like uh, compress images um, locally uh, using, using an application like this versus going to some third party website online where you don't know what they're doing with your images once you've uploaded them and they've compressed them. Are they clearing them? Are they selling them? Are they training AI with them? We don't know. So that's why I dig Ruba. That's why I wanted to cover Ruba is because we use third-party solutions so much without even thinking about it that we don't know what they're doing with our data behind the scenes. Even if they have a disclaimer or a TOS or a whatever, we can't guarantee that they're actually following their own uh, their own agreements, right? So I, I dig Ruba um, and we're going to take a look at it in this video. But before we get there, I do wanna jump over to their GitHub repository here uh, where we can see that it is a web-based tool for processing images and converting documents with a simple interface. And I agree, it is super simple. It's easy to set up. We're gonna cover all of that, but there are some things that I wanna cover just to set some expectations with this application at least at the time of recording. Now, if we scroll down a ways, there's lots of really good information in here. Of course, you can go through and look at the code and that sort of thing. Um, but they do have a matrix down here uh, for format su uh, support and compatibility, um, where you can find the source and follow the row to find uh, different output formats. Uh, is it supported? Is it the same format? Currently, uh, we can do all kinds of image stuff with no issues at all. Everything converts very well with the supported formats. Now, when we get to document conversion, converting from one format to another with documents, PDF is coming soon. PDFs have always been kind of a nightmare to work with, in my opinion. Um, but there are several different options in here that you can uh, convert from one to the other. So um, just know that there that, that is in the works, just not quite there yet. And then even further down the road, uh, or I, I'm guessing, I don't know the developer, don't know anything about it, but they are working on a background removal as well. So really do dig all of that. Um, so it says uh, notes down here, isolated processing environment, no file storage, immediate delivery, automatic cleanup and input validation. So they put some thought into this, which I really appreciate. And if you appreciate it, you should you should jump over to the GitHub repository that will be linked in the video description and come over here and give this a star. Uh, it's currently at 110. I'd love to see that number go way up. I'd also I'd also love to see a dark mode on this. I know I know not everybody's into dark mode like I am, uh, and that's fine, um, but I like to have dark mode for my personal stuff. So we'd love to see that at some point. With all of that out of the way, let's take a look at Ruba and using Ruba, that sort of thing. So uh, again, image processing, document processing, and batch processing. But let's start at the beginning with image processing. We can just choose a file here. You can drag and drop, or you can just click choose a file. Uh, I'm going to choose my dumb face right here from a live stream or not a live stream, a podcast I did with Ethan Shawley a few weeks ago. Uh, 1020 was when I did that. Wow, it's been six weeks. Holy crap. Anyway, not the point. So uh, we can see that this image, it's got the name there. It's got how big the file is, 0.98 megabytes. Uh, if we scroll down, we can we can delete it or we can get and we can also see the Sorry, we, we can remove it from the dashboard, not delete it from our computers, I should clarify. Um, we can also see the dimensions of the image if we wanna do that. 
Uh, next, we've got basic options for uh, output format. We can choose uh, JPEG, PNG, WebP, GIF, BMP, or PDF. Um, so we can convert images to PDF, but we can't convert other documents back and forth from PDF. It's a weird thing, I know, but it is what it is, at least for the time being. Uh, we're just gonna say, uh, we're, we're gonna say, we're gonna say JPEG just, just because. Now we can choose our, our, our uh, now we can choose our quality level of lossless, high, medium, or low, and there's percentages next to each of those. Now I'm just gonna go with medium because I'm sure that's gonna be perfectly fine. Uh, we can resize the image if we want to do that. We can maintain the aspect ratio. So I wonder if I do like, it does not. I wonder, I've never actually uh, tried this, but you know, let's see, let, what are 1200 by 686. We're just gonna put in the width and see what happens. I actually haven't done this. I like to do some of this stuff on the fly for the first time with you guys along for the ride. Uh, we can do fit, which will maintain the aspect ratio, which is what has got me curious. We can fill or we can stretch. Um, below that, oh yeah, leave, I don't know, we'll see, this is, Anyway, we can also optimize the image, which reduces file size while maintaining quality, which I feel like should be kind of a no brainer unless you're deliberately trying to lessen the quality for some reason. And then again, uh, down here, there's the remove background option, which is coming soon. So uh, so we've set our width to a thousand. We're gonna see what happens there. Uh, we're, we're at 0.98 megabytes or 0.97. Uh, if we actually look at this uh, right here in, in my screenshots folder, it says 0.97 right there. So we give or take, what, 100 kilobytes or something, whatever. We're gonna scroll down, we're gonna click process image. And right there, there it is, just that fast. Um, and we can see that we went from 0.98 megabytes, uh, so like 980 kilobytes, uh, down to uh, 41.29 kilobytes, and the image looks pretty good. Um, so let's let's download the image, and here's where we're gonna run into our first issue of sorts, hosting this locally. If I click this, it's like, hey, that's an insecure download, uh, and we've blocked it. Look, I can manually keep it, it's fine, but, if you want this to not have that issue, you could probably change your browser or browser settings or whatever, or you can host it on a domain and not have that issue anymore. Uh, this is my, my development, my testing URL or domain name that I use. This probably won't be up when you're there, but just to do it again, real quick. Um, let's, let's, let's do, let's, let's do uh, 60%. Uh, let's, let's set that at a thousand as well. Uh, we'll optimize the image and we'll process the image. And there it is, 37.67 kilobytes. So took it even farther. Image actually still looks pretty good. Click download and it just worked. So um, that's how easy it is to process images. Though we didn't, I said I was gonna do something and I didn't. Let's come back over to here. Let's go to my downloads. Um, so here, let's take a look at this image. Uh, let's do photos uh, always. Man, that's weird, there we go. I mean, yeah, it, look, it wasn't a great image to start with, right? Um, let's do this. Um, yeah, they, they look basically exactly the same, uh, which I dig, even though they are considerably smaller. Um, and and if we look down here, let me, let me do this, oops. If we look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, it says 1,000 by 565. So I was able to put in the width and it automatically calculated the height for me. So I was hoping it would do that. I wasn't sure it was gonna do that. It did it. I'm really, really happy with that. So let's let's close these. Right? That, that, that's an image process. Yay, we did it. Um, next, we can do document processing where you can um, uh, choose a document. I'm sure I probably got a document here that's not too offensive. Um, note, one kilobyte, um, data camp, sure, why not? Uh, it's not even registering as size because it's a two kilobyte text document. And then I can convert it to uh, any of these other document types. Let's just do a PDF, click convert. I'm gonna give it a second. Again, PDFs are a little, a little more complicated um, than just doing an image conversion, but there it is. It took it from like one kilo, two kilobytes to 14.6 to kilobytes. Um, there you go, and there's the script I used for uh, for data camp integration I did a while back. Um, but it did it, just just that quick and easy, uh, not a big deal at all. Uh, what I wanna do here is actually just reset all of this and kind of start over. Um, so again, converting, PDF, or converting documents from one style to another, very, very straightforward with this, um, you know, 
choose your file, choose your output, convert document, you're good to go. Um, so the last thing we wanna look at here is batch processing. And here you can um, choose files. I'm just gonna go back to my pictures and my screenshots, and I'm just gonna select those and click open. There they all are. And again, I am on, um, on my URL and versus my IP address because if I want to process all of these all at once, like I've got it currently set to, um, you know, I can I can choose how I want to process these. I'm just going to say PDF. Um, the one thing I will notice for batch processing is there isn't there isn't a quality option here. Maybe they're going to add that later. Just something I noticed. Um, but again, I can set the height and, and the width or whatever and let it calculate the other side if I want to, and then click process. We're going to give it a second. And like now it's going through, but it's like saying, hey, batching was done successfully. Click OK. But it's like, hey, this wants to download multiple files. What do you want to do here? I want to allow it. And there we go. <laughs> now it just downloaded all of those for us. Um, and if we come over here, um, let's let's actually go to my pictures. Let's go to my screenshots. Those seven, yeah, those seven items, 5.22 megabytes combined. Uh, if I go to my downloads and choose those, wait, oh wait, it's those seven, there we go. Um, yeah, so from 5.22 to 1.74 megabytes, just that quickly and easily, really, really dig that. That went really, really well. And then the other thing I could do, uh, you know, I can choose those, those same seven. So uh, click merge into a PDF. I can choose my paper size. Uh, I'm just gonna choose letter. Uh, orientation, auto, based on image, or portrait landscape, you can choose how you want those to be uh, put on there. Uh, I'm gonna say portrait because they're, no, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna say portrait because they are all landscape. I want them to turn, I want one page, image per page, create PDF. Now it's processing uh, everything there and just that quickly and easily, there we go. Um, it didn't, oh, uh, it still didn't turn them the way I wanted it to. Um, but maybe maybe that was a user error on my part. But it created a PDF with all of the images that I selected. So, so that's it. That's that's how easy it is uh, to use Ruba. I really dig it. Again, I really wish this had dark mode, but that's that's a me issue. Probably most likely not a you issue. So, if we want to deploy this in Docker, like we talked about earlier in this video, there are a couple of different ways that we can do that. Um, we're going to come back over to the GitHub repository here, um, and if we if we take a look through the code or the the files that are here, there is a Docker Compose file. Uh, we're going to take a look at that in a moment, but if we just want to deploy this using uh, the terminal, uh, we can just run this Docker command right here, and it will take care of that for us just with one quick command. And I do appreciate uh, that they added the dash D flag there um, to make sure that it will run without the terminal window having to be open. So well done on the developer for that. But for the sake of simplicity, uh, we're just going to take a look at this Docker Compose. I'm going to open this up. And right here, this is it. This is super, super simple. So my only my only thing I would say about this to the ve developer is you don't need the version uh, in here for the newest versions of Docker Compose. Uh, that has been done away with. So you can remove that safely unless you're trying to be compatible, backwards compatible, I guess is the term I was looking for there. Anyway, um, we've got our services here. Our service is Ruba. There's only one service running. Uh, our image uh, is is Ruba. It's the latest version of Ruba, and we can see that uh, it is it is this developer name right here that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Uh, and it's hosted on the GitHub repository right there. Uh, by default, this runs on port 8081. If you need to change that, um, you just change the first half of that. Don't change the second half. However, if you do need to change the second half for whatever crazy reason that I can't imagine, you can also change the port right there. Um, so do with that what you will. For volumes, we've got two volumes. They're both temp volumes. Um, one of them is, is a Docker volume, the other is a mapped volume. I'm not sure why there's both, but make sure that you put the mapped volume, this first line right here, map that to somewhere that makes sense on your setup. Uh, I'll show you mine here in just a moment. Uh, this Docker volume, you can just leave this doc temp. Uh, you can just leave that alone because it's declared down here as well. Uh, again, we've got an environment variable for the port of 8081. Um, and then the restart policy of unless stopped, that's all great. Um, so what we can do then is jump over to Portainer. 
um, and take a look at my stack right here where it, it looks almost exactly the same. The only thing I changed uh, was this path right here. And I just said home, docker, ruba, temp. That's the only thing that I changed about this other than maybe the order of some things. Um, but it's all basically the same outside of that. Once you've done that, you can just uh, click update the stack or deploy the stack, I guess, if it's the first time you're deploying this. And uh, and it will, it will download and it will deploy on your system. Uh, we can take a look at the logs and we can see um, you know, let's, oops, let's just, let's max that out uh, real quick there and turn off auto refresh, scroll all the way up. We can see that it's doing all kinds of stuff there. Let's see if we can go all the way back to the top. Um, there you go. So like, it's just giving you processing information, but it's not giving you any pertinent information about what files have been processed, which I appreciate from, uh, from a security and, and, and that's that, that kind of perspective, right? It's not telling you what files were processed, just that files were processed. So good job on them for that. However, there's one thing that I hope that they can fix, modify, improve on, and that is the image size. If we take a look at the image here uh, for Ruba, it's, it's this line right here. And this Docker image is 910.4 megabytes currently uh, as it as it is uh, as of recording uh, December 10th, 2024. I hope that they can optimize that a little bit because that's a big Docker file. Um, if we take a look at like Portainer, 300 megs. If we look at Cloudflare, 60 megs. I hope that they can bring that file size down with some optimization, some refactoring, things like that. Um, but that that that's Ruba. And what I dig about this is you don't have to declare a URL uh, in the environment variables. Uh, if we take a look uh, at, at Ruba here, uh, there's nowhere in here to declare a URL. So whether you're using Nginx Proxy Manager, Caddy, Traffic, Nginx, or, or Cloudflare Tunnels, whatever your reverse proxy of choice is, you can just point to it and be done. You don't have to declare anything in the Docker Compose. So I really dig that. So uh, that's Ruba. Uh, that's, again, I found this uh, through Ben over at Snack time. Uh, go give him, uh, go, go check out his video as well if you want more information about this. He also does some really cool stuff as well. Um, he's kind of a, a more a more toned down, calm, slow version of me, which I really dig. We've chatted a few times. Seems like a real cool guy. So definitely check out his video on this. Check out his channel. Um, links to everything, his channel, the video, uh, the Docker Compose, the GitHub, all of that will be in this video's description. So check that out. But I think with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.